Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. I'm here with the finishing touches of my trifold junk journal that I've made and decorated with the Graphic 45 Gilded Lily Collection. So, I've only done a couple of little bits without you. I've put a closure on. Not difficult, it's not something you need a tutorial on because it is just this. I've basically just tied some lace around it. I've not fastened it. You could glue it on either side if you didn't want it to go anywhere, but I've left it as is. I didn't want to compromise these string ties because so many people said how nice they looked and I quite like them. I've gone ahead and glued the cluster on the front. And let's open it up. I've put a pocket there using one of the small journal cards and then I've used another small journal card to pop in. I've popped a little tab on it. And in here we've got some little cutter parts that came with the kit. In addition to the 12 by 12 sheet, I had these. Yeah, I, sh I should have filmed these before I used them really, shouldn't I? They were just, yeah, two, two of them together would make a 12 by 12 sheet. Uh, they were just an extra that came with them. Little journal cards and some little envelopes that you put together. So this is one of those, a little envelope that you can use as a fixed pocket. You could glue it onto one of your journal pages and then you could take your tag in and out. I've just popped those there for now so the recipient can decide what they want to do with it. So open it up again. We've got the ephemera folder there. I've just filled that with the rest of those little cutter parts. We've got one there that you can... These are actually, if you've never seen one of these before, you thread ribbon or fabric or anything through and you can just decorate a pocket. You could even turn that into its own little belly band, I suppose. Uh, I've cut some extra tabs so they can be used on pockets. I knew there were more, I've just spied them on my desk. <laughs> they can be used on pockets or journal cards as you wish. So they pop in there. And yeah, a couple more little envelopes. They're just cute, aren't they? Why do we like cute little envelopes with cute little tags? We just do, don't we? I've not embellished them any further. I don't think you need to when a paper's this gorgeous. So that's that. And let's get on to the last thing we need to do. I'll just move that lace out of my way. So the last thing we're going to do is make a policy envelope for here. Now... The way I make them, I'm not sure if I've done this on video before. That's the measurements I've cut my paper to. And this is so that you can make a policy envelope. If you don't have one continuous piece of paper, I'll just get the rest of this out, that is big enough. A policy envelope is just an envelope. You fold up, fold down, and then it fastens with your little round button string closure. Yeah, but we couldn't make that from one piece here because... It, it wouldn't make a big enough envelope, would it? So I do mine out of two separate pieces. I just find it easier. So, right. The first piece is going to make our bottom pocket. And I've cut that. I want the bottom pocket to measure four and three quarter inches wide. So I've cut me a piece of paper one inch bigger than that so I can score to make some little folding bitty bobs. That is then going to be the flap of my policy envelope which will go like so and there you can see it will then be long enough yeah I hope you get that I feel I'm not explaining well today but I don't know so I'm going to take my bottom piece and I want to score it a half an inch along each side and along the bottom so that's that And that. And that. So up to now, it's just like making any regular pocket for a junk journal. Or anything. Planner, mini album, whatever you put in a pocket in. I've got my scissors. I'm going to mitre the corners. So that just eliminates any bulk once we fold these in. And if you do it at this angle... It just makes it nice. It just, I don't know, it just makes the bottom of the pocket easier to get your bits and bobs in. So you fold that back, fold that back, and then the bottom one ends up going over 
those two and it just makes it that much easier for things to slide in and out of your pocket it, it just does <laughs> don't ask me why it's one of those i learned to do that so many years ago i'm, I'm really not up on the whys and wherefores i just know it works better right i'm just going to give that a light inking and I, i'm now conscious of the fact that someone complimented me on not uh Making them watch me do all the inking. Yeah, it can get a little bit boring, can't it? It can't be avoided all the time, but yeah, it can be a bit yawny. Right, so that's going to be the bottom. Now, my other piece of paper I've cut already to four and three quarter inches wide. Yeah? And the height of it, it's what I had left after I cut a four and a half, piece, four and a half inch piece chunk off. So it's seven and a half inches. It doesn't need to be seven and a half inches. I'll tell you how how it needs to be in a minute. In fact, yeah. If I put that where I want it, and then I mark this with a pencil about there. So I'm going to score that now to make my policy envelope flap come back scoreboard I've got a mark to you on the wrong side so there I'll score that then I'll rub that off there we go I'd be lost without my pencils with rubber on top because no way on this earth would I manage to keep track of a rubber or eraser we call them rubbers in UK Where do I want it? <laughs> I've lost plot, people. I've lost plot. That's it. I had to really work then to figure out which way it would have to be for the writing to be, for the picture to be right way up. Jeepers creepers. Not on form today, I tell you. Good job it's last leg of this. So that will be the flap and the pocket will go on there. Do you know, actually, you could perhaps get away with an inch less. Your pocket would be shorter and it wouldn't tuck in as much. But if you're using a 12 by 12 sheet, use the whole length. So that's the measurements. The flap was four and three quarter inches wide and it was seven and a half inches high. The lower down you have the pocket, the bigger this back piece is going to need to be. Does that make sense? If the back piece was higher, you wouldn't need as much to fold over. So, yeah. Right, that's looking good. I'm just going to round these off. I'm going to go with the medium. Then I'm going to smidge in my ink in. We'll then put our buttons on. Before we glue anything down. Right, I'm going to grab my one inch circle punch for that. Is that one inch now? That's three quarters. You know, I could have sworn I got half. It's out ready. Yeah. Yeah. I, I won't make jokes about being blind. But yeah, I sometimes wonder if I am. Right. Now I'm going to need to get, if you're just doing it from your designer paper, you'll need about three layers. And because I've got lots of scraps of it, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just punch six all together. One, two, woohoo. You could use any old piece of card and one layer of paper. Two, three, four, five, six. Then I'll decide if I want my buttons to be blue or flowery. What do you reckon? I think I want them. I don't know. I might want them both. Do you think there's a way I could make them blue and flowery? Hmm. Yeah, there is. I'm going to get a smaller circle punch and I'm just going to cut a couple of flowery ones out. Oh, there we go. So if I layer... Yeah, I like that. So it'll be a flowery one with a blue 
thing round, little thing round it. <laughs> yeah. You know that thing on me, Bob? Jigger me what's it? Yeah. Yeah. It's over there. Over yonder. I've got no words today, have I? It reminds me of something they used to set at little ones at school <laughs> when they got tongue tied. Use your words. Yeah. I don't have any. <laughs> so I only need to ink two of those. So I'm going to glue that. And glue that so that's now three thick. I'm going to put that one, glue that one on the top. And then I'll do the same with this one. I'll show you doing one. Then I'll pause while I do other and let them dry for five minutes while... Yeah, I might go and do some exercises. Yeah, I might exercise my face, you know, stretching. Yeah, I might start saying the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy frog or log or dog or whatever that is. Yeah. I'll do some vocal exercises. Like, wah, wah, wah. I'll run through my scales. See if I'm talking a better when I get back. Because, yeah, I'm not making a sterling job of it so far. I have moments like that. Can be a precursor to a migraine. I don't, I'm not stressed enough to have a migraine. No. I've not been out in any bright sunlight. I've been really good and not had chocolate. So, no, nah, it's not going to be a migraine, I tell you. Right, we'll put that one on. And I'm going to punch holes in the middle of them all together. Whee. I might link to another... <laughs> <laughs> Another video where I can actually speak and I make a button string closure. Right, so I will pause while I glue those, let them dry for five, and I'll be back. I'll be, yeah, articulate when I get back, hopefully. And I'm back, hopefully I can speak now. So I've got my big chompy crocodile here. Because what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make some holes in the flap and in the bottom to put our button string closure on. So I like to start by putting the hole in the buttons. So grab your pencil woman. And this is how I do it, very precise. That looks about middle. I'm still gonna use my handheld one for this because I just find it easier. So the old, do you need a big one if you've got a little one? Do you need a little one if you've got a big one with these? I do tend to find I use them both. I use the smaller one where I can and I'll use the, only use the big one where I can't use the smaller one if I've got to reach into my project more than an inch. So it's up to you to decide, is it worth spending that money? It depends how often you make button string closures or need to punch holes in projects that are further in than an inch, I suppose. Right, I'm going to then judge the second hole with that one because it looked okay. Punch. Right, I'll then use one of my buttons to judge where to put my hole on these. Right. So I'll pop them on, decide where I want them. Oh, move up a bit, woman. That looks good to me. Looks about in middle-ish. So I'll do that one. And then I'm going to punch the hole. There we go. And then to put the hole in my bottom one, I like to pop them both where they're going to go. So... going to be where's it going to be put it where you want it woman put it where you want it right so that one's going to be there want the, that one that low down so i'm just going to put a mark but i'm conscious that i may have got it a bit too far to right or a bit far too far to left and when i'm in perfectionist mode I will then line those two pieces up like so and I will move that down and look for my mark. So yeah, I got that really quite over to one side. Can you see? It's right over that side. So then I will do that. 
then I know that my buttons are directly in a vertical line. I hope that made sense. That was the best way I could think of explaining that. So I'll punch that hole. There we go. Then I'm going to use eyelets again to pop those buttons on. Ooh. I'll grab those eyelets. Oh lordy, they're here. And I'm going to use the same colour that I used on my spine. They look about the same colour. If you don't have... If you don't want to do these with eyelets, you can always do them with brads. Or if you don't want to do button string closure at all, pop a Velcro dot on. That will close it really well. And I will... I'll tell you the settings. I don't know if these correspond with small one. Yeah, they do. I think, is it A2? Yeah, A2 you want to close these eyelets. Just like you did when you were putting the eyelets in for the spines. Put your lid on your ink, woman. You don't want to dip out in your ink, apart from your ink dauber. That's that one done. And we'll do this one. Oh, I'm a disaster today. <laughs> oh, damn. If Monty Python was still going, they'd probably give me a job today. And comedy sketches. Oh, don't even go there. I now want to watch Dead Parrot Sketch. If you don't know what I'm on about, just Google Monty Python, Dead Parrot. Right, so that's my button and string on. I want to glue these. So, just get them nice and lined up. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put a little pencil mark. So I know where to line my top one up, yeah? That can always be rubbed off later. And then I'm going to glue this. You can use whatever adhesive is your first choice. You can use your dry adhesive or glitter glue, whatever you like. But I glue this one down first so that the bottom of it is all hidden. And then I'm going to line that up with my pencil marks that I can't see unless I stand up because the way it's shining. That looks good. So what I don't want is that to end up wonky and then this having to go wonky and you, you just don't want any wonkiness on this project. I think you get that by now, don't you? This is not going to be a wonky project, so I'll just then get rid of that. You can't even see it one at top. There we go. That's all glued on. Then I'll glue this bottom one on. We're not doing thumb notches. I'll keep reminding you, if this, this is not a thumb notch project. Right, first thing to stick down is your bottom flap. Because that makes it easier for you to slide things in and out of your pocket. If that's sticking out and you think it might be a problem, just put a piece of paper or card over it. These are not too bad because it does squeeze those eyelets pretty flush. So I'll pop that on, then I'll line that up. I'll put that down to see if it all stays lined up. Looks pretty good to me. Yeah, we like. So when I'm happy, I'll just push that bottom flap down. Gently fold it back. And just press it again. Yeah, then I'll go ahead, move that up a bit. 
then I'll go ahead and put my glue on these side pieces. Now, if you are using a Graphic 45 collection, this pocket will then be the perfect size to put some of the larger journal cards in. Or you can use it to just put any of your little bits of ephemera in. So, there we go. One policy envelope in a paper saving way. It's not all about paper saving, it's just, yeah, if you don't have a big enough piece of paper, you'd need a rather long piece of paper to do a policy envelope this size. It would have to be what? It'd have to be nearly 14 inches long. And we don't do design paper pads that are 14 inches long, do we? Right. That's all nice and glued. So I'm going to grab some of these. That's the one we had on the front. We'll have that. And they just fit perfectly. We'll have that. That's another different one. I'm sure I've got more. Yeah, we'll have that. So we've got five in there all together then. That are all different. And then just to fasten it. I don't know if I want to use... I'm not going to use string. I find string a little bit thick for this. I'm going to use my wax linen thread. It's a cream one. It's the same one I bound that teeny tiny notebook with. This one. It matches pretty well with everything. So I'll tie it on there. Two little knots. One. Two. And I've said before, I don't over tighten these. I'm of a mind if it works its way, its way loose and falls off over time, it's very easy to put another bit of string on. Not so easy to repair holes if you've over tightened it and ripped your paper. So, wrap that round three or four times and cut it off. So, there we have it. A little policy envelope in the back. I love putting these in journal covers. They just fit so well. So that goes there. I'll put my little notebook back in. We'll bring it all back into shot by moving some tools. So there we have it. Our journal is finished. Yeah, I've decided against blinging it up in any other way because I really do like it just as it is. I'll bring my piece of lace back in to tie it up if I can find it. Can I find it? Can I egg find it? Shall I get another piece? <laughs> I tell you, I am so not on form today, people. The brain is wearing. Yeah, it was a rather large roll of ribbon this, so I'm not upset that I have to do another one. In fact, if you're unsure how to decide how long your lace needs to be, I'll show you how I do it, and I'll also tell you how long it ended up being. So I put it where I want it. I always put extra on these as well, so that again the recipient can cut the ends off and use them to decorate in the journal. So... That looks like I've got enough room to tie a bow and I will cut it. Yeah, that's plenty of room to tie a bow. So let's measure that. Yeah, so that's about eight inches. So I perhaps leave myself two lengths that are eight inches long to tie a nice big bow and leave her a little bit extra like that that you could cut off should you so wish. So the whole length of this piece is, I'll measure it on my cutting mat for you. In case you ever wondered why I have my cutting mat upside down, this is why. It only, because I live in the UK and everything's metric, it doesn't have inches along the bottom of the mat. So I have to have it upside down to use the gauge that's at the top. A very weird mat. I will keep that in mind next time I buy a new one. So that's how many inches? 22 plus, what's that size of my mat? 22 plus 14 is 36. Oh, so it's a yard, a yard of lace. So yeah, you'll need a yard of lace to tie around and make your closure. 
So I'll tie it one more time. If you do have any questions or if uh, it sounded like I was speaking in Spanish, if you understood me about as well as if I were speaking in Spanish, just ask me some questions in comments. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that, I hope some of that made sense. Yeah. And I hope you actually understood what we were doing. I just honestly felt a bit tongue tied today, but there it is all finished. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.